Hey, what's going on guys? In today's video, we're going to look at how to create this ink drop slideshow effect in DaVinci Resolve. It's going to be a slightly longer video, but we're going to explore a lot of interesting concepts. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, have a look at how to do this in DaVinci Resolve. So as per usual, we're going to start with a Fusion Composition clip. Let's take it to the Fusion page and bring in a background note here. The first thing we're going to do is to change the alpha setting uh, to zero. Now let's actually bring in the background that we'll be using for this effect and attach to the background node as a foreground. So essentially, we're just using this background node to set the size for this uh, entire video. Now let's bring in a fast noise node and we're going to go to the color tab. Now let's go to gradient. Uh, change the gradient type to redial and what we're going to do here is to bring the starting point of this line towards the center now let's bring the end point uh, towards the starting point you're going to see that this back and forth is going to create uh, that ink drop effect all right so uh, we're going to come back to that later but for now let's go back to noise and change uh, detail, contrast setting, as well as the brightness setting. Uh, so all this is going to sort of get you closer to the ink drop look. Uh, one thing to note here is that you can manually change this contrast setting to a much higher value. This will give you a much sharper edges. Uh, so it just comes down to your reference. Another thing we're going to do here is just to move this ink uh, a little bit over to the right. All right, so now let's go back to the color tab and we're going to keyframe the end point of the line here at the beginning of the video. Now let's go to the end of this video and keyframe again. Now let's go back to the beginning and we're going to try to uh, get this end point as close to the starting point uh, of the line as possible. So we're going to copy the X of the starting point and paste it over here. And now let's manually adjust the Y so that we'll get it close to the Y of the starting point. Now the question is that why not just uh, copy and paste the Y of the starting point uh, and paste it here. Well, so from my experience, if we do that, it will actually turn the screen black. I'm not sure why, but uh, yeah, at this point it looks pretty good. So let's bring up the spline editor and we're going to change the interpolation for both uh, keyframes. Now, if we go ahead and have a look, guys, you're gonna see that uh, this ink drop effect is uh, looking pretty good. So uh, let's come back to the noise tab and we're going to adjust the seeth as well as the seeth rate setting here, just ever so slightly. The idea here is just to give it a little bit more movement throughout the entire duration uh, of this uh, video. Uh, all right, guys, uh, so the next thing we're going to do is to uh, copy uh, this uh, fast noise node and then paste it. And then uh, in this uh, new merge node uh, here, we're going to uh, change the apply mode to multiply. Now let's uh, move the foreground uh, here over to the right a little bit. And uh, we can also change up the size uh, also just to make it a little bit different from the other one. Uh, now let's come back to this new fast noise node here and we're going to the uh, spline editor and what we're trying to do here is to move the starting point or move the very first keyframe over to the right a little bit so there is a bit of a delay uh, for uh, this second one in terms of when it starts. So let's close it and then you're going to see that it's going to start a little bit later. Now let's look at both of these combined. You're going to see that the first one is going to show up first then the second one is going to follow suit. So that's exactly what we're trying to do. All right, let's come to this uh, new fast noise node here. Uh, we can play with the scales, play with the seeth rate, as well as the detail, uh, contrast brightness setting. Uh, we can try to make this a little bit different from the first one, right? Just so that uh, there's a bit of a contrast. Uh, and you're going to see that what we're trying to do is just to sort of layer on this second ink drop to make this effect look uh, much nicer. All right, so to wrap it up, we are going to uh, bring in a, a bitmap uh, node and then we're going to connect this new merge node to it. And then in this bitmap node, let's change channel from alpha to luminance. Now let's use this bitmap node as a masking node for the first merge node here. And now you will see that this ink drop effect is going to create a nice alpha channel uh, on the original background image that we used earlier. So now let's uh, come to this merge node and we're going to create a little bit more movement here uh, for this background image. So let's keyframe the size parameter. Now let's uh, make sure it's sitting at one. And now let's come to the end of this video. Uh, let's keyframe the uh, size setting again, but bring it up just 
just ever so slightly. Now let's keyframe the angle parameter as well. Let's come to the beginning of this video, keyframe, and now let's come back to the end. And now once again, bring up the angle parameter just ever so slightly. So now you will see that as the ink drop uh, effect appears in this video, the background image is also zooming in and also rotating just tiny bit. So just this just uh, brings a little bit more movement uh, to the overall effect. All right, guys, I want to show you another way of creating this ink drop effect. So uh, once again, we're going to rely on our best friend here, Fusion Composition Clip. Now, the initial build out in the Fusion page uh, here is uh, exactly the same. So I'm just going to fast forward this part. Now, when we do bring the fast noise node, initially, it is also going to be the same. Uh, we're still going to rely on Redial as the gradient type. But when we do go back to uh, the, the noise tab, uh, uh, when we make changes to detail, contrast, and brightness, this is where it's going to be a little bit different, as you can see. So the idea is that we want this particular one to, first of all, be a little bit more rounded around the edges and also be centered in the video. All right, uh, let's also uh, bring up uh, the scale setting a little bit here too. But one major difference this time around is that we are going to bring a bitmap node uh, first instead of copy and paste the fast noise node. So let's connect this fast noise node to it. Let's change the channel from alpha to luminous. And we're also going to adjust the low and high end of it. So as you can see, when we bring up the low end and also bring down the high end, you're going to see that this is going to give us a slightly different look compared to the one that we had before. So uh, this one is pretty good. Now let's go to the fast noise node here. Let's go to the color tab and we're going to keyframe the end point uh, of the line uh, at the beginning of the video here. Now let's go to the end uh, of the video, keyframe again. Now let's go to the beginning and we're going to do basically what we did uh, previously. We're going to make this end point as close to the starting point as possible so that it's going to be uh, barely visible to our naked eye. All right, now let's uh, bring up the spline editor. We're going to, again, uh, change the interpolation uh, you know, for these two keyframes. And uh, once that's done, you guys can see that now this is a slightly different uh, ink drop effect compared to the one that we had before. So now what we're gonna do is to copy this fast line node and then paste it. And here in this merge node, we're going to change apply mode to multiply again. And then we're going to go to this new fast noise node and we're gonna go to uh, the spline, or bring up the spline editor, and then just to move this starting point over to the right a little bit so that there's a, a delay here uh, in terms of when it starts. And then we're going to readjust the interpolation just to make sure everything's smooth. Then uh, let's go to the color tab. Let's come to the second uh, keyframe for the end point here. We're going to bring down the X for the end point. These are going to be the small ink drops that we're going to just throw into the video after the big one. So this is going to really look really nice as we put them all together. All right, so let's uh, come to uh, this uh, merge node here. We're going to move this smaller ink drop over to the right just a little bit, just to make sure there is a slight overlap between the big one and the small one. Now, of course, you can also come back to this new fast noise node and make changes to it, uh, but uh, we're not gonna go crazy here. So if we just have a look at what we have uh, right now, uh, guys, it's looking pretty good. You're gonna see that this smaller ink is going to follow uh, after the big one. All right, so uh, let's just create more of these. So uh, we're going to bring a duplicate note, connect the fast noise note to the duplicate note, and then in this duplicate note, all we're gonna do is to change the time offset to minus 15. So uh, once that is done, let's connect this back to the merge node, and we are going to first of all change apply mode to multiply. Then let's also move this uh, ink drop, this ink here over uh, to another part of this video, uh, just to make sure that there is a slight overlap between the big one and this uh, smaller one. And uh, once that's done, we're just going to copy and paste this duplicate note and then connect the uh, duplicate note to this new one. And then I connect this new duplicate note back to the merge note as a foreground. Now let's come to this new merge note and change apply mode to multiply. We're just going to move this new ink to another part of this video. And once all that is done, uh, if we have a look at this effect right now, you guys will see that the big ink is going to drop first and all the other smaller ones will drop uh, one after another afterwards. It's a really nice look. It's a really nice touch compared to the other one. Uh, all right, let's uh, use this bitmap node once again as the masking node uh, on the original merge node. Let's bring this back to the edit page 
And guys, we're getting really close to uh, just wrapping this thing up. So now let's move these two over to the second track. And we're going to start bringing whatever image that you want to use uh, for this effect. And you can just uh, shove it underneath on the first track. So you will see that these images will uh, shine through uh, the alpha channel. And now let's just do the same for the second one. Uh, it looks really good. Now, the only thing we need to do here is just to add some movement to the images themselves. And to do that, what we're gonna do is to just disable the second track temporarily. Now let's come to the beginning of this image. We're going to keyframe the zoom position as well as the rotation angle settings. Now what we're gonna do is just to bring up this image a little bit here, and we're going to come to the end of this image, bring it up uh, even more, just ever so slightly. And we're also going to make sure I uh, change the image position a little bit so that it's centered. And then uh, we're also going to bring up the rotation angle just a little bit. So now you will see that this image will zoom in and also rotate. We're going to do a similar thing here for the second image. Uh, guys, this is honestly really up to you. It's uh, however you want the image to look. The key idea here is just to uh, bring a little bit more movement to these still images as the effect goes on so that it's going to sort of work nicely with the effect itself. All right, guys. So uh, once all of this is done, what we're going to do is just to enable the second track. And uh, now you will see that uh, this is going to look really nice. The moving images are going to work really well with the ink drop effect that we created. And one last thing we can do is to add a transition between the two fusion composition clips. Uh, this is absolutely optional, but uh, I'm just gonna throw in a smooth cut here and I'm gonna shorten the duration and then change ease uh, to in and out. So now you guys will see that there's going to be a nice little transition effect between uh, these two uh, fusion composition clips. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoy this long tutorial. I apologize for the duration. And as always, I will see you next time.